three, two, one. We are one people, with one will, one resolve, one cause. Our enemies shall talk themselves to death, and we will bury them with their own blood. We shall prevail. On November the 2nd, the Talking Apple will introduce episode 147, and you will see why this week will be just like any other week. Everybody, welcome to another episode, a special one, I should say, of the Talking Apple Podcast. My name is Marlon Sabala, and I'm joined, as always, by the man uh -huh. on the other side, Mr. Alex Dunlop. That's me. Hello. Say I'm Alex Dunlop. Very good. Well, we are the Talking Apple Podcast. We talk about everything Apple, all the news, the rumors, all the uh, facts, everything that comes out, we talk about, uh, especially with a UK yeah. focus. Uh, and it's special, he said. It is special because there's so much going on. First okay. of all, we have uh, new iPads, um, new iPad minis, iPad 4s. Uh, Alex has his copy, more of that later. And uh, and some really big news on uh, executive uh, seats at Apple. Uh, the Talking Apple podcast is brought to you by Audible. Head over to talkingapple.co.uk slash audible to get your free audiobook. That is free audiobook and support the show. And by my PC Backup. The best online backup you can get. Talking about code UK slash backup. Well, Alex, let us get started, yeah. shall we? That's the intro. There's isn't so it? much to talk about, man. The this... big story today. Okay, let's go um, straight into it, shall we? Yeah. Um, this is, well, first of all, it kind of comes of press info from Apple, and it, it's um, about uh, the loss of a man. Well, two men, actually, in the end. Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Forstall, Scott Forstall, is the the first one, the big uh, kind of loss, if you like, uh, in the fact we're talking here about leaving the company. So he's gone. He is gone. And uh, the big news is why or how come he's gone? You know, right. he didn't just leave. Perhaps uh, was he was he fired? Was he pushed out? Was he kind of made to resign? Right. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. There's so much. I mean, I, I, I'll say this out of the. Uh, Right here at the beginning, I, I don't want to turn this podcast, and I'm sure you you agree with with me, Alex. Uh, you don't want to turn this podcast into um, some sort of a gossip, um, like one of those magazines, trashy magazines um, of tech. Uh, but there is a lot of stuff going on as to how he he was, uh, you know, kind of pushed out mm -hmm. and what happened, you know, who was behind it. We're going to try and bring the facts out, and not too much of all the the rubbish that's going on. Um, the fact is that uh, Tim Cook decided to rearrange things. So we have Johnny Ive, just to give an idea of who's in front of the company now, who the executives are. Um, it wasn't just that some people were kicked out. Johnny Ive is now uh, in the leadership of Human Interface. So this new, I suppose this is a new department now, Human Interface, which means that is now in charge of everything design, from hardware to... Uh, software, anything that has to do with UI, with design, with kind of um, the way people approach uh, an, an Apple device, that's the guy behind it, which is excellent news. We also have EDIQ in front of everything services, so Siri, Maps, iTunes Store, App Store, everything that services and internet connected, that's EDIQ. We have Craig Federighi, Federighi, maybe. He's in charge of iOS and OS X, so software is with him, and Bob Man uh, Mansfield is technology. It's mainly it's to do with hardware, uh, so chips. He deals with all that stuff. So those are the main uh, areas now at Apple. Apple is now divided into sort of one, two, three, four areas: design, uh, services, software, and hardware. A lot simpler than what it was before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good news. Yeah, I think. Uh Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of clarified, hasn't it? 
um, quite a simple who does what. Uh, they're quite um, distinguishable uh, categories as well, aren't they? Mm. Uh, but uh, like we mentioned already, one of the big things, um, Scott was iOS, wasn't he? Uh, iOS software, really. He was kind of led and uh, helped out with that, didn't he? That's right, yes. With that team. Um, so the reason why is that people are trying to you know, figure out. Um, I would agree with this one. This one makes sense. The fact that uh, perhaps for a long time there's been a bit of strife uh, between him and, and Johnny Ive. Specifically, the, the, the many articles uh, mention, you know, those little... Um, those little design features of the iBooks app and the Contacts app mm. that they try to skeuomorphic. I think that's what ha- the proper name. Where you try to bring uh, things from the analog world. You know, if it's a, a book, you try to bring pages, and and the effect that you you move your finger and the page kind of comes up and and turns over to the other side, uh, and. Scott was supposed to be one that defended that kind of design, whereas Ive didn't like it at all and preferred a very simplistic way of putting things, just lines, squares, maybe curve here or there, but really try and simplify things instead of complicating them. Um, yeah. We see it a lot, actually. Um, there's that kind of lever stitching that they have the, on yeah, that Find My stuff. Friends app and stuff yeah. like that. So apparently that can't be just the only reason, but that surely points to... to uh, no, but I suppose design of iOS is a big thing. So if there's sure. disagreements with that, whether you think we're going down a road, you're bringing in features that aren't modern, someone else says that I, I, I like these, it keeps you in touch with the world, whatever, that's just, really is quite a big thing. Um, although not perhaps the grounds for kicking somebody out. So obviously it's just the start of things. Yeah. Uh, the... There are reports that uh, the the really the last thing that moved Tim Cook to to you know show uh, Mr. Scott the uh, the door was when he refused to sign a letter of apology for the maps fiasco. Uh, in his own eyes, the maps was still the best uh, software that was out there, um, maps wise, and he, he just wouldn't mm. apologize officially. That is, um, so. Tim Cook decided to to let him go, maybe because of that being the last really uh, drop. Yeah, I suppose as well. They say a lot of the time it's um, it was it was Steve that he had a good friendship with and who backed him on perhaps the same design ideas and things like that. Uh, perhaps to mention that perhaps obviously now that that kind of connection is gone, he's more of a minority um, with with the ideas that he had as well. Um, but yeah, the, the letter of apology was kind of one. Uh, a different point, if you like, something else that added to it, um, kind of showed how he must have had a, quite a um, s- sort of stubborn attitude, I suppose. And when when he knows something is is right in his eyes, he's he's not changing, he's not um, stepping back. He's he, that's that, that's the only way, the only answer. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. There's a lot of people saying, yeah, th- this was Steve Jobs' little boy, and uh, and yeah, he had been there since uh, he was brought to Apple from uh, from Next. Yeah. Uh, so actually, he worked for for Steve well before uh, he came to Apple. Um, but I don't know. It's it, it's difficult to tell. We we're not we're not inside. We we can't really tell what uh, the discussions that people have in the background. No. Um, you know what? If Tim Cook decided that to simplify things, he needed to let a few people go that didn't quite fit into the philosophy of the company. That were perhaps overreaching on their role, uh, not being you know uh, helpful then maybe that's a good thing. Well, I, I suppose we'll only see um, in, a, in a few months, in a few years, uh, as iOS changes, are we get, uh, we're going to get a more simpler um, interface? We'll see. Uh, yeah. Bob Mansfield uh, apparently um, decided to stay because he knew that Scott was going to go. Apparently, they didn't quite get, a well, uh, get along very well, uh, the two guys. So uh, according to John... Uh, Petskowski uh, at All Things D, uh, Mansfield, one of the reasons for him to stay, and bearing in mind that actually he keeps, uh, well, he's not going to have exactly uh, Scott's job in any way, but yeah. I'm sure, you know, him being the hardware guy and managing um, some of the some of the work on iOS, he would have to work with Scott. Uh, when they're all connected, they're all the, these are the, yeah. uh, the senior vice presidents of Apple, so uh, at some point they would have to connect. Um, and this all th- this whole thing 
explains or not explains, but we are expecting now that Johnny having uh, Johnny having a lot more power in the company. It seems with with these changes, will bring uh, will bring quite a big change in, in design, especially to to iOS. We hope. Um, yeah, a few things. I mean, if we said before that what he was doing before people didn't like um, or the kind of ideas that we see at the moment, obviously they want to change some and they're going to change things perhaps to make it uh, cleaner, have cleaner edges, flatter surfaces, make it kind of uh, nice to look at. And in their eyes, perhaps removing these little um, analog world details actually makes it look better in their opinion. It makes it sleeker, makes it more kind of glossy and glassy. You know, you know I, I kind of, I don't know, man. I, I kind of like the... Uh... Um, that kind of effect, but maybe, maybe I won't miss it. I don't know. No, it's, it's I difficult mean, to tell. Yeah, does it go with the image? You know, when you've got a all glass fronted design, glossy that kind of idea. When the you know iPads and stuff, quite simplistic, and then you look inside and there's like a leather notebook um, and and stuff in there. I suppose I suppose you shouldn't notice design, and and that's the problem that we've had lately with iOS is that. We are noticing design. Design. Sh- if you start to notice the design, then that's because it's perhaps influencing on how you use the device and perhaps making it harder to use the device. Uh, it's getting in the way, and uh, that's the kind of thing that I've defended. Is that the the simplest the uh, the OS is, then the yeah. better it is for the user, uh, and and the better it is for for design overall. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, oh. Let's just mention also that John Browett, the guy from Dixon that came to Apple, uh, Dixon's, is now out as well. Okay. He's been sacked. Yeah. Um, so, don't really know. It's not it's kind of as big a story uh, as the other one. No, it's kind of weird because he's only been there 10 months. He was there long. in January and, and 11 months. And and he's gone now. I I have to wonder why did Apple pick somebody from Dixon's? Uh, it's not like Dixon has the you know any difference of a yeah. you know, of a shop from uh, from all these other guys you know from Curry's for example that is now in trouble. I don't know. Do you go into Dixon's and think, yeah, this this looks nice. It's different from all the other tech shops that I've been in. No, mm. no, exactly. Um, perhaps they saw something in him. It's not always to do with. Perhaps the work that we can see they've done, they might know something else about him. Perhaps worked with him. That's, that's about. obviously what they realize. Yeah, a specific mm. characteristic. But I mean, at the end of the day, his work is what describes his. Uh, well, yeah, uh, the kind of character that, that he is. The interesting thing was that uh, when he came into Apple, Apple awarded him uh, with a hundred thousand restricted shares. Okay, and out of those a hundred thousand, five thousand vested in October. Uh, October the 20th, so just a few days ago, which means that he got um, about 1.3, 1.4 million pounds worth of worth of stock. Uh, Now the rest, or the majority of of the shares, uh, were were going to be you know vesting a little bit later. So for example, 15,000 were scheduled to to vest at the end of this year. So he just missed out on that, which is quite Mm. annoying. Apple now has, uh, you know, 15, that would have been a lot of money. I mean, that, that would have been like four, four million pounds that the guy lost just just for not staying at Apple another couple of months. Yeah. Um, of course, he, I, I'm sure he didn't have much to do with, with that decision. Um, but so Apple has a lot of money to invest on on a replacement for Browett uh, when he comes along. We'll see what's here, what happens. Tim Cook is now... Uh, retail leader, so to speak, before yep. they can find somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Any more to say about this? Uh, Nothing. Um, these changes up top, what do you think? The the stock didn't react all that well. They, they didn't, you know, no. Apple stock didn't drop much, but it dropped a little bit. Yeah. Um, what would you say? Is this is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Um, it's just change, isn't it? Um, and... I think until the change plays out, you can never really be too sure anyway. But hopefully, if this is, if, you know, some of the things we've been saying, like I say, you can read into it how much you like. But if they are all true, they didn't get on with him, they didn't agree with each other, they didn't have the same kind of mindset. If they've got rid of him now, and the rest of them that are left, they've kind of sorted themselves out, and now they've got perhaps more of a a fixed goal in mind, it should make it more productive uh, as far as the company's uh, concerned. So... uh, 
you know, you would think with that in mind, it would be a benefit to them. Sure. Uh, and now it's kind of organized a bit better because they've had problems over the last year or so with um, executives in the, the kind of company and who does what and people go in and people changing and uh, new people and not working out and stuff. So there's a lot of things been going on. So hopefully if this is it now uh, set to go, that would be kind of, that would be, be a good thing. But, mm -hmm. I suppose at the end of the day, the, the simplest uh, the company is, in terms of the structure of its executive uh, team, then the better it is for us. And, and you know, one of the big problems with uh, with these huge companies, take Microsoft, uh, for example, is the fact that they they just they get lost in, in teams. You know, they they can't yeah. report to another guy because you know that guy is perhaps uh, have has a problem with this with this other guy on the other team, and it just gets way too complicated. So maybe it is a good thing that uh, that everything is simplified. And you know what? I'm sure Scott has enough money to not have to work for the rest of his life, so it's not like he's in the is in the doghouse. No. Um, so there we go. Now, perhaps the biggest thing though that happened this week was uh, iPad uh, fourth generation and also iPad Mini. We were wondering whether to start with this because it's a big thing, and actually today mm -hmm. was the launch. The iPad Mini was available in stores. Indeed, um, Apple stores from eight AM, I believe. Uh, so yeah, big big deal, um, big thing really, um, and uh, not not a huge, not huge queues, or not as not no, as no, big no. as what you no, have for you the think, iPhone. If you think big, yeah, don't compare it to the iPhone. But this is you know something that quite a lot of people have been waiting for, um, and it's here. Right. Okay. So, so before you get to your uh, personal, you know, experience with with the iPad. Uh, they've all run out. If you try and buy one now, at at least on the Apple's website, it, it now gives you something like two weeks. Is it two? Two weeks yeah. of of, yeah. of um, wait. So it is sort of when you're talking about stats, it is kind of like the same speed as your iPad, um, as your iPad three. Um, First of all, I would say, you know, I recommend going and having a look, just having a go with it. Um, the, the, the big fears are perhaps the smaller screen means that you can't see as much, can't do as much. It, it sort of a, uh, is, a, is a negative thing as far as the iPad is concerned. Um, and there's not a retina display. But if you actually go and see it, you can, a lot of those problems are eliminated. I haven't noticed any problems with it. And it's lighter, it's thinner, it's nicer. It kind of uh, fits well in your hand. So that's the first thing you perhaps notice about it. It's not slower in any way. Um, no. I mean, the iPad 4, it, the fourth generation, according to uh, some of the um, benchmarks that we've been seeing, is, is actually yeah. a lot faster than the iPad 3. But the yeah. iPad 3 is actually the same speed pretty much as the... Uh, as the iPad yeah. Mini, it's yeah. not the A6 out the iPhone 5, is it? The processor, it's, no. The uh, iPhone, yeah, that's what makes a difference. The uh, this has the iPhone f uh, A5, whereas the uh, iPad 3 had the A5 uh, X, which the X just means it's it it's in enhanced for graphics uh, on the Retina display screen. So you know what it's <sighs> most of the reviews, and I suppose we could come up with yeah. with those. Uh, they say, colors are very pleasing to the eye. I'm just reading from, from a mishmash of them. Colors are very pleasing to the eye and viewing angles as ever with uh, a display uh, from Apple and they do not disappoint. Another one said, yes, many owners may have to uh, make do with some resolution envy, but they at least won't be lacking in any other regard. Uh, there's no tablet in this size range that says beautiful, con beautifully constructed works as flawlessly or has such an incredible software selection. Would I prefer a higher res display? Certainly. Would I trade it for app selection or hardware design for the consistency and smoothness of its software or reliability of its battery? Absolutely not. And by the way, he was taking a hit at uh, the Nexus 7. This particular reviewer is saying, I've been using the Nexus 7 for a long time and I would never, ever trade it for... for or I would never trade an iPad Mini for a Nexus 7. Mainly all of them are saying... It is very light. The screen is beautiful, but it's kind of a bummer that it isn't a Retina. Right. Yeah. Uh, now you don't have, or you did not have, uh, an iPad Retina. So for you, no. maybe it's no big deal. No, although I do have the iPhone four, which is Retina. So you know you would sure. notice it. Uh, but it's not a massive deal, like you say. Uh, like I say, the colors are good. And the one thing that it was noticed is the 
the quality of it. And it does look and feel like a device that has been well designed. Right, I you mean, have the Nexus 7 yeah. over there. You can well, definitely tell a difference, can't you? Yeah, on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the iPad itself is designed well, you know, the the fourth generation and stuff. Uh, but it just feels like the iPad mini is, is something else about it. The kind of, perhaps, the, just the finish on it just seems a bit nicer. That that back, the new back that they've got for it. Uh, all, all blank is yeah, or slate or whatever slate they call it. Slate or whatever it is. Uh, and the little bezel around the edge, the kind of diamond cut bezel. All those things kind of add up to sort of be, yeah, this is a really nice design. As opposed to perhaps the more plasticky seven inch uh, tablets that there are out there at the moment. Um. Yeah, it's even lighter than the iPhone, actually. And the iPhone was just announced, you know, right. a month or two ago, yeah. and it's lighter than the iPhone. It's thinner as well, you, yeah. which is quite amazing. Sorry, I didn't say lighter. Um, I did say lighter, that's not you what meant I meant. Thinner. It's thinner. I was going to say, lighter, than an iPhone, lighter would be quite impressive. Uh, I was wondering. It's, it's thinner, yeah. Um, I will say something. Um, now, you've had a lot more time with it, because it's your iPad, but I've played along with it. What I, My impression is it's, it's a great little device. Although having it in my hand and, and trying it, I was going to get one in perhaps at the end of this month and replace my iPad. But I'm thinking, you know what? Coming from an iPad 3, right. experiencing the, the Retina, I'm not sure. It's the resolution that does it. I, I definitely noticed straight away that this is not a Retina display. It's and I know that two years ago we would have said, well, what the heck? It's a great display. But we've kind of been, you know, uh, catered so well for in terms of displays and, and the resolution of the iPhone and iPad that I, I just don't know. Maybe I'll wait another year and see when they, when they bring the new Retina uh, iPad mini. Yeah, so it's not the size of the screen. That, that no, no. Um, the other thing I'll say is that even though it, it's not the same thing as holding, for example, a 7-inch tablet, it is actually quite a lot wider. So you, you have to kind of stretch up your palm a little bit to, to keep it in your hand. Oh. Um Definitely a huge difference, of course, from a from a normal iPad. Just the the weight uh, difference yeah. is is a big deal. It's not in any way um, able to use it in one hand, in my opinion. Um, no, no. You know, uh, but you can and hold anything it in from I think iPhone size from a four inch just is is out of the one hand reach. Yeah. So the seven point eight five would would just be you know completely out there. Um, but I do like it. I, I do like the size. Actually, you know, having I would have to use it to actually make uh, make sure. But you know what? I I do like those th that size, and maybe I do like it more than what I do my my iPad size. Right. Uh, at the moment, what prevents me from from you know spending the money on it is just the Retina. I know it sounds dumb, and uh, and it's better resolution than the iPad too. But I you know I miss Retina when I look right. at that screen. Shame. Maybe I would just get used to it. Yeah. So, so that's uh, something to think about. If you are somebody who has the retina display, maybe would like a smaller screen, it may be a problem. Uh, well, um, what would you say? Recommended, highly recommended? Give me, give me your... Okay. I, I know we never do this, but give me a 1 to 100 on what you expected compared to what you've experienced from Apple, compared to what you've seen with the big size iPad... What would you say? That's uh, quite a lot of variables to put into uh, <laughs> yeah, to one right. number. Maybe you need to think about it. Um, I would highly recommend it, definitely. Um, I wasn't sure whether I'd like it, and I'm the sort of person who didn't particularly see the need for a normal iPad. I uh -huh. um, thought it was kind of a little bit too big, a little bit too close to perhaps a 13-inch laptop screen. There's not much of a variation, but this is a great... This isn't a laptop. This isn't, you know, something that's not very portable. But then it's so much better to use than, you know, an iPhone in terms of, you know, web browsing or whatever you're doing. Uh, what so are you mainly best of doing both. with it? Huh? Uh, may I ask? What are you mainly doing with it? What, what's your use case for in it? In the last six hours that I've had yeah, it. Sure. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know yet. I'd, I'm just, I'm still figuring out stuff that it does that, you know, I've not having an, I haven't an iPad before. Um, one thing I have noticed actually is all the apps that are designed for iPad are great because well that's because you've never experienced iPad sure. apps right? no that's what I mean um, so for those that think that it's just a slightly bigger screen it's, it's a totally different experience um, so um, I don't know yet I don't know um, web browsing kind of reading just the kind of general 
Um, Browsing is great on, on an iPhone sure. size, yeah. Yeah, well, it's great on the iPhone, so presumably the biggest screen and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I presume this will be great kind of uh, counterpart to going into a coffee shop or whatever. Um, it would be perfect for that sort of thing. Uh, and reading. Um, so, yeah. I should ask you this in a week, but do you see yourself using this outside the house, taking it places? Not a lot, I don't think. I don't know. Um, I have to get a case first, obviously. I'll have to ask you next week or in a couple of weeks sure. to see how you... Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things that is... It doesn't. It won't have Wi-Fi at the house, uh, depending on where you are. Well, tethering is your answer. Yeah. So. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a great little device, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, in terms of the iPad 4, I suppose none of us uh, used... I, I played with one this morning... There isn't really much you, you you can tell in terms of difference. The uh, the speed is technically twice the size. Uh, try, sorry, twice, twice the, the speed. Um, so it's twice as fast. Uh, but you know what? The iPad 3 in front of me is not a slug. You can't really tell any slug in no. it anywhere. So it's kind of like, yeah, theory, in theory, it is faster. Uh, but in real life, does it make any difference? Probably not. Uh, the only other difference is, of course, it, it doesn't have a 30-pin connector. It's now a, a, a yeah. little tiny lightning connector. Yeah. And uh, what's the other difference on the iPad 4? I can't remember. <laughs> Anything else? No, no, I don't think. Uh, I forgot to say that the iPad mini now has uh, sp- stereo speakers. Right. Yeah. Does, does, uh, have you experienced that? Does that make any difference whatsoever? I've They're not so tried close that, to each other. I mean, what, why would you want stereo speakers? Oh, it will make a difference, won't it? Sure. I mean, stereo speakers are supposed to be, you know, make the difference between your left ear and your right ear. But, you know, the speakers are, you know, connected to each other. Right. So how would you... you Why? They're still... There's there's two, isn't there? Two holes. Yeah, there's two holes. The holes are, you know, next to each other. It'll it'll spread the sound like nothing you've ever heard before. Enough of that. Uh, The iPad has... See, back to the iPad uh, big... Uh, brother, the fourth gen has one gig of RAM. Uh, I don't know if the app, the other iPad three had uh, one gig of RAM. I think so. Yeah, yeah? the three, the three. The yeah, gen. yeah. So yeah, no exactly. difference there. Um, okay. So apart from all those uh, new hardware uh, announcements, um, Apple also announced uh, or is out uh, iOS six point zero point one. Uh, I suppose we could talk about that at the end, but since I've mentioned it now, um, that's a few more bugs, uh, bug fixes, and uh, and little things that uh, that you probably haven't noticed. There's a glitch. I've noticed this on the iPhone 5. There's a glitch with a keyboard. Um, I don't know if it's iPhone 5, if it's iOS 6. It, it just, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's an ugly glitch on, on the keyboard. Sometimes it happens. So that supposedly will be going away when you uh, when you update your uh, your phone. More of uh, that later. More of that later. Updates. Uh, indeed. Uh, let's see. Also, interesting on the on the software size uh, side, uh, Apple has um, you know announced a new Fusion Drive technology, mm-hmm. and uh, a Mac developer called Patrick Stain has been toying with his own Mac Pro setup, and he's realized that actually you can. Uh, just using the normal 10.8 uh, OS X um, operating system, use Fusion drives on older Macs. Right. So you, you has the way you did it, it actually uh, had to set up things on on the command line. So mm-hmm. not something that uh, you know the normal uh, OS X user would would set up. But yeah. it is there if you want to use it. Is it an actually a Fusion drive? Is this saying it supports Fusion drives or well, supports it, it the? Means that feature of in, a fusion drive exactly well he, no the, a fusion drive uh is is just an ssd plus uh, yeah. a spinning hard drive mm-hmm. a fusion is just a software you know yeah um so this i presume it when once tested means that it also does the sorting itself in yeah, the background, it automatically that's the, moves things about that's the software bit isn't it yeah um so that that's a good thing. Uh, again, you won't be doing this yourself, I don't think, unless you're no. kind of a. Um, and and again, I mean, you don't have space. There are some modifications. For example, on an iMac, you can kind of remove your your optical drive if you have an older iMac and put a, a one of those uh, drives in there. But apart from that, I don't I don't see many people actually uh, playing with this. 
Okay. Uh, Andy's asking in the chat room if he separated the SSD from the spinning drive. Yeah, he did. Um, so he had two and they were working fine. Uh, what other announcements do we have from Apple? Just uh, iTunes. iTunes. iTunes, iTunes 11. 11. Wait, Apple said the end of October. That was uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's November now. Yeah, so they failed to deliver on that. Um, so they're saying arrive by the end of November. So we've got a few things to look forward to in November. IMAX should be coming in November as well, um, whenever that may be. Uh, and iTunes 11 is not surfaced yet with these these kind of changes. So um, it's one of them things that obviously is taking longer than they thought. So. Yeah. Um, so we don't know when exactly it's coming, but according to CNET, it's been delayed uh, somewhere to be released some sometime in, in the end of November. Uh, we have the industry news uh, next. We don't have a jingle. Uh, so there's actually some interesting stuff there, including Apple's response to the iPad mini. But before we go, uh, be, before we go there, we do want to mention uh, a special page that we have set up yeah. uh, here at the Talking Apple podcast. Uh, TalkingApple.co.uk slash help us. And what you will see there is, well... We want to make the podcast a little bit better. We want to make a few more things. Um, we want to invite more people to the podcast, make the quality even better than what it is now. And <laughs> which is really bad. Well, it's going to be very now. It's, it's quite um, um, quite bad actually when you compare it to to some of the setups that we've seen. But um, but to the do video that, that is we're talking about the video and the audio actually um, okay. with with the you know the the XLR microphones the sound would be quite different. A bit more deeper, you know. But we can't do that without your help, sure. and that's why we've set up a page. And there's many ways you can help us to achieve our goal uh, to um, to buy the things that we need. Uh, it's not much, nope. and you can contribute either by a donation, which is always appreciated. Not just a donation and a thank you, but we'll actually send you some niceties. Yeah. So basically, the point of this is, we need help. We need to do um, something. We can't, <laughs> yeah. We can't make it better now, really, with what with the equipment that yeah. we've got. Everything is software driven, and we need some actual yeah. hardware. So the point is, we're now asking for help to raise a little bit of money so that we can buy some new equipment. It's all listed on our website. So if you go to talkingapple.co.uk forward slash helpers, you will find what we want, how how that's going to affect us, what we can use it for, how to get the money. And it also lists a few different things. As Marlon mentioned, if you donate a certain amount of money, we'll give you things like, thanks for, for donating because you've donated so much, we'll give you an iPhone uh, case. You know, with, talking Apple. With a Talking Apple logo. Talking Apple iPhone case um, or perhaps a, a laptop sleeve, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so the, the, you know, the more you help out, the more we'll be grateful, the more yeah. you'll get. Um Within reason, obviously, because um, we're not going to give you more than you've donated. Yeah, worth. No, that, 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 that wouldn't help. So, uh, uh, perhaps the best way, though, that you could help us is by actually taking a look at uh, one of our uh, sponsors, which is, for example, Audible. Audible. If you head over to talkatable.co.uk uh, slash Audible, you can get yourself a free book. And I wouldn't hesitate because you can cancel at any time. You'll be subscribed to uh, a one book a month um, gold subscription, but you can cancel at any time, keep the book, and even if you cancel it straight away, we still get uh, a little bit, I think it's about eight, nine pounds from Audible to contribute yeah. towards that uh, that goal that we have of 700 pounds. So, But obviously, we recommend that you don't cancel straight away. You won't want to because it's so good. We recommend that you enjoy the service because audiobooks means... Um, well, Listening to, to books being read to you. so Knowledge it's, into your head, Alex. Knowledge. Yeah, but not just knowledge like reading a book. It's knowledge, it, perhaps in convenient times to read, you can have it read to you. Perfect. Exactly. Um, and they've got some really good pricing plans as well. May, may I mention one book, for example, if you haven't read uh, Steve Jobs by Isaac uh, Walter Isaacson, uh, it's a great book, quite thick when you look at it, but actually in audio, you'll go through it uh, quite easily and um, speedily. Perhaps when you're cleaning the house, when you're cleaning the car, or any one of those uh, boring jobs that uh, you have um, you have to do, but you can't really do anything else while you're doing it, well, you can listen to a book. So help us that way. That's one way, but you can obviously uh, donate. If you donate £10 or more, you will be 
uh, entitled to go into a 25-pound iTunes gift card uh, prize draw. So let's go into our industry news now, shall we, Alex? Industry news. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your watching. Um, iPhone 5 slows yep. Android growth in the US and the UK, according to uh, some crazy analysts. Yeah, crazy analysts um, is speaking here. Something that has been going the opposite way for a long time. Um, so the Android has been clawing into that market uh, the, that Apple has. Um, but uh, since the release of the iPhone 5, it, it shows that iOS is gaining quite a bit in the US and the UK. Um, and it, it kind of shows that this is but, well, a new iPhone release. You would expect that to happen. But kind of a surprise. It, 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 Apple has increased its share, according to this report, from 18 to 28% in the past year in Britain. That's a lot. That is a lot. I mean, it's not like we're talking about the iPhone 5 comes out. Of course, you're going to see a bump. Of course, yeah. you're going to see Apple taking a few percentage points of, uh, of Android. But, you know, 10% year over year, uh, that is kind of a big deal. Yeah. I wonder why that is. I wonder why, why a big change. It's not like the iPhone 4S or the 5 was, was such a, a, you know, a huge jump from the previous models. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, I don't want to say that's a good thing to see, I suppose, you know, being an Apple guy, I, for me, it is a good thing to see. There's more people to send iMessages to. <laughs> but there yeah. we go. Um, if they're your friends. Good. Um, Siri, Google, what's the, you know, the competition here? So the industry yeah. news here, Google search app, um, bringing a uh, Siri competitor to iPhone, not to uh, other devices, but to the iPhone. Yes. Uh, so Google search app has been... A has been there for a long time, but now yeah. it has a, a Siri-like feature where you can press a little button and you can ask it many things. So like, play me a trailer from the upcoming James Bond movie or when does daylight savings time end? I suppose this is the American way of saying it. Um, so many, many things. Uh, it's supposed to be even a little bit faster than Siri. Uh, but uh, for me, this makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, how could you know, a button inside an app be of any competition to Siri. I mean, the whole point of Siri is that you can just press it and hold it, even if it's in your pocket sure. or the button on your hand, on your headphones, and you interact with it without even looking at your phone. That, for me, is the main strength of Siri. Sure, which, by the way, I've, I've got now. Oh, you do have Siri on there. On my iPad mini, yeah. Um, you know, from anywhere you are in the OS, even if you have the phone in your hand, okay, you can press the home button and you can talk to Siri. I, I can't see no. how any any app that you can buy w would ever stick. I mean, it'd be fun the first few days, maybe you play, oh, look, you can, you know, it, it doesn't understand this or it understands that, but you would never use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Unless it's better, which I guess it's probably not. Well, no, even if it was better, and some saying that it is better, right. it's just not as convenient. But by a long way, if it was like loads, loads better. Um, well, it, it'd like be talk to a friend to... on the phone. Yeah. Um, but Someone also, if, this is from somebody like yourself who doesn't probably use the Google search app. If you used it, it's a welcome addition, isn't it? Sure. I suppose I, I can't see anybody using the Google search app. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's presumably fine, they man. do. It's quicker. You just type something. Right. I don't know. But maybe I'm completely wrong and there's a lot of people using it. Um, maybe. But we've, we've had these apps before. But it's nice to see, I suppose, Google, mm -hmm. Google search, Google voice coming to, yep. to the iPhone in, in strength. Um, still in Google, uh, the response to the iPad Mini has, uh, well, it is an updated Nexus Seven. Sure, nice. Uh, which is sorry, that's good. Nice yeah. little sentence there. I know, I know. I just make things up as I go along. Mm. So Nexus is an updated 7. Nexus Seven in the fact that um, the way Apple updated their iPad. That's so, right. They didn't make a big deal out of it. No uh, massive changes. Well, price changes. Uh, the Nexus Seven is now no eight gig version, and the one, uh, the one hundred and sixty price point uh, belongs to the sixteen gigabyte version of the Nexus Seven. So they've actually reduced the uh, reduced the price. So basically, the eight gig now, um, or the sixteen gig, replaces the price uh, um, point of the uh, of the older one. So you know, that's is it got four G. No, no LT, no no four G available here. Um, that's going to be you know if somebody goes into a shop and sees an iPad, 
uh, kind of like the same size as the Nexus 7, but it costs uh, 100 pounds more, uh, that would be, you know, a bit of a difficult decision for somebody to justify an iPad if you're not bothered about design, if you don't know much about these devices. Um, of course, you know, you're talking about design costs a lot, and that's what we discussed last week. But uh, yeah, uh, they've also announced a Nexus 10, Samsung Nexus 10, uh, and that is a 10 inch, and it has a crazy resolution of two thousand five hundred and sixty by sixteen hundred uh, wow. pixels. That's that's a lot of pixels. That's a pixel uh, resolution of uh, the Retina MacBook Pro, thirteen inch. Not just. Yeah, so not just a laptop, but the, the Retina edition of that laptop. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a, it's, it's a big screen as well. Um, it's got to have a lot of power and a lot of battery to do that. Well, yes, yeah, it's supposed to be good battery. It. Uh, the thing is, for me, I mean, why would you want to make something that's like Retina times two? I know it's not quite times two, but, right. you know, when it gets the Retina, you can't tell the pixels, no. so why but more pixels. Yeah, maybe it's for all the people that use their yeah, tablet yeah. in front of their face like an old person. For old people. Old people don't care about pixels because they don't see, see very them. well. Sure. So I can't see a reason for them to do this. But anyway, um, I suppose Google is trying to attract those. Uh, you know, normally the, 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 the people that buy uh, the cheap Google alternative are the people that care about features. How many features can I guess can I get for every hundred pound that I pay, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. They don't care about how it looks, or you know, they just want to see. Oh, I can do this, this, and this, but I only paid this, and that's I suppose what they're what they're going for. Um, it costs three hundred and twenty pounds for the sixteen gig version. So this is direct. You know, Google is hoping direct competitor competitor to the iPad, the fourth generation, um, but it's you know a hundred pound cheaper or eighty pound cheaper in this case, and a better resolution, even though it wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Would you be, that a question? Uh, would you be, you know, uh, attracted by uh, this device, even though it's uh, not quite as polished as an iPad, but it's 80 pounds cheaper? It's a bit sort of too soon. I yeah, just I, bought an iPad. Yeah, Alex has just spent um, his money, he doesn't care. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. You'd look at it and you'd think, is it good? It's cheaper, but is it is it as good? And as I was mentioning earlier on about the kind of when you look at an iPad and you see the finish, you see the polish, you see how well it the build quality of it, it makes a difference. I think. Yeah, I I, I think, and uh, this is the main reason why I would never trade an iPad uh, for for a Google device. The the apps are just not there. Right. I'm sorry, but there's no app support for tablets on. Uh, on on Google's uh, Play Play Store, no. Um, into our legal fights, I suppose. Order! You stole Order! my idea. Uh, you, you stole Order! my idea. You shut up. Uh, you shut up. You shut up. You want a piece of me? Order! This is funny. It is um, funny. Maybe we should be in our dumb news. A bit of both. Maybe we should play both jingles at the same time. <laughs> well. No, I won't. No, no, won't. <laughs> um, so last week, was it last week, we said that Apple has released their statement uh, about Samsung saying, uh, we apologize um, and we are really, really sorry that we've uh, misinterpreted and, and showed you how bad Samsung is when really they're, they're really, really good, really great, and we're so sorry to them. That wasn't quite how they put it. Um, it was more like, and we're sorry because Samsung is, is rubbish. Yeah, we, we're sorry that they copied our design and the yeah. judge couldn't figure that out by himself. So, But look, other judges decided in our favor, like this one <laughs> and that one and that one. So, um, hey, there you go. Basically, that wasn't what they intended. That's not what the uh, the court wanted them to do, funnily enough. Um, so they've, they've told them, uh, and they've actually ordered them. The UK court has ordered them to rewrite their website, their statement uh, about Samsung, because basically that was going against what they what they said, which... You know, it doesn't put Apple in a very good light. Um, they perhaps tried you mean to get Samsung in a very good light. No, Apple from the fact that they've kind of disobeyed their order in a right, way. Right, right, sure. Um, because I mean, I presume they looked at it and said, "What have they told us to do? We'll try and get you know as close to the line as possible." Um, but 
the, the way this article is written, um, it, it, it's kind of showing that actually they've almost not done what they should have done. You know, the, mm. the court order they've kind of not even followed um, because it was... Well, they did, they did set exactly what the judge asked them to, but they just added a few things that made sure. it look like, you know, it was no big deal. Depends on the fine print, I suppose, of their instructions. But basically they're told that um, it within 48 hours... As of yesterday, Thursday, 1st of November, I think, they had to change it and basically yeah. <laughs> reword it. Apple's response was, oh, we need two weeks to change this statement. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they removed it now. They're very slow at writing, typing, aren't they? Apple? Yeah, of course. They, they, don't, you know, they only have one guy working. One finger typing. Yeah, just, just one person who runs Apple. Um, anyway, they've removed it from the website. So there's no link at this point uh, as we record the show. Although there is, though... Um, an advertisement uh, at least showing up on, um, oh, when, where was this? In one of the newspapers. I want to guess, oh, I can't, The Guardian. I think it was in The Guardian. It looks like The Guardian. It says guardian.co.uk next to the image. Yeah, on the right. that's where I got it from. Uh, and in The Guardian, it, it's, uh, it's kind of weird because it, it does say advertisement at the top. Yeah. And then Apple kind of uses a very unattractive language. Uh, and when I say unattractive, Th- is this that is. The, this is something different to what we were just talking no, about. No, it's the same thing. This is okay. this is the uh, official apology. But the way they do it, uh, Andy's saying that it's in the Telegraph as well. Um, what they're saying is uh, they're using a bunch of like uh, uh, court case numbers and websites so that the, the text, which is maybe, I don't know, 15 lines long, is kind of, I don't want to read this. That's not, how you look at it. It's not relative to life, is it? Because you look at it and you think... Um, Number zero 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 one yeah, eight one six zero seven. W- w- we don't w- dot slash dot slash dot slash. You know, we don't think in numbers. Uh, and then the website address is b a i l i l dot org forward slash e w forward slash cases dot e w b e h e patents. You know, t- puts you up. It means nothing to you. You know. Um. So yeah, it and has, I think that was done on purpose. Sure. Um. So this is uh. Yeah. Is this a this republishment is, after they were told they've done it wrong, or is this what they well, originally? I, I imagine that this is today, right? Um, and but it doesn't mention it. This one doesn't mention anything about any other court decisions. No. It doesn't mention anything like uh, they had on their website, the, such as Samsung is not cool enough. They've got to change what they have on their website as well, presumably. They have to change. At the moment, they just removed it. Uh, but again, this is. I mean, we're making a big deal out of this. Uh, because it's funny for us, we follow the industry. Who's going to even read this? I mean, okay, they spend some money putting it on the newspaper. Who is who is actually going to pay any attention to this for more than five seconds? Right. And if they, even if they read through it, it doesn't even say that it's from Apple. For all we know, it just it's an announcement yeah. that the newspapers put in there. Yeah. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Um, no big deal whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few websites that are reporting on this. Um, and Andy on the chat room sort of said it's it's like saying, my mum told me that I've got to apologise. Just kind of doing well, it, a bit being like forced that, to it? do it. Yeah, I've, I've been told to do this, but I don't really want to because I don't agree with it. Here it is. Here's my apology. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very, very honest and... Uh, and Genuine. Uh, genuine from the heart. Wholehearted apology. No. Uh, okay. Enough of that, Alex. What do you say we head over into our updates? Do you have new updates ready to be installed? Very good. Our updates uh, consist of updates to the Safari, to yep. iPhone, to Aperture. If you use those, I would imagine you use at least one or two of those. Then head over and get some security updates because they are needed. Yeah, so that's the Safari. iPhoto has a few photo stream enhancements, uh, some sharing stuff and some sort of little bug features. And Aperture is quite a a fairly big update. Nothing to kind of photo editing features, but um, there's there's a few different things that have been changed there, so quite a lot of changes to that. I don't have Aperture. I don't know. Maybe it's been a while since it's been updated, but uh, there's one there, so... Very good. Uh, another update, we had mentioned this earlier, so I won't spend much time on it, uh, but basically uh, we have an update also to uh, iOS 6.0.1. Yeah. Uh, we didn't actually mention earlier on that there is a, a beta of 6.1 on the works. Did you not say that? I thought that's what you were talking about. No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think we mentioned So what's that going to bring? It's, I think it's changes to maps. 
Uh, yeah. It's going to make it easier for you to report a problem when you see that you know perhaps the street is wrong or something like that. Yeah. Um, but n- it's, nothing huge. No, right? some music playing, skip shortcuts. Uh, they've been graphically changed, tweaked with a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, uh, just get your update. Um, and uh, you know, at the moment we can't see that there's any problems with this update. So I would say go and get it. This week in dumb news. That would have been a bit cooler if it uh, didn't have the big gap in the middle. It would. That's one of the things we can do if we reach our goal because... Talkingabout.co.uk forward slash helpers. Indeed. Make the podcast smoother. Uh, Dumb news. Today in the dumb news we have Steve Ballmer. Of all people. (laughs) He's there. He's there because, you know, he's a funny guy. Uh, Developers, developers. Yeah, okay. That's... uh, that's old. Um, so what, what, is, what has he done? What has well, he done one thing he said, it's talking about the new Surface tablet. We briefly mentioned it last week. Was it um, announced last week? It was released last week. Not yeah. announced, released. Yeah. Um, so he's saying the device, you know, obviously it's going to blow everyone away. It's going to be something everybody has been waiting for. And one of the quotes that he has is, I don't think anyone has done a product that I see customers wanting. Which I just felt In the tablet like, market. Sorry? In the tablet. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, not in the world, um, <laughs> which I thought was, uh, it's fairly ironic considering, also mentioned last week, iPad sales have exceeded 100 million uh, units uh, since its debut in a couple of years ago. Nobody has ever done a tablet that people would ever want to buy. iPad, shut up. Um, would they? What was that? It's my iPad. It's, it's on the did not disturb button. I, there's nice. a problem. With, I'm going to call Apple. Good advertisement for a quality well. design. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, do not disturb function malfunctioning aside, the iPad is pretty good. Um, and uh, the fact that 100 million units have been sold, um, that kind of illustrates that people do want it. This is the guy. It, oh, okay, Steve is not the most fortunate of men with, uh, with words. This is the guy that when the iPad, when the iPhone was originally announced, said, uh, yeah, nobody's ever going to want this. It's not good for... A, for businesses, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that, it doesn't have a keyboard. I was going to buy this stupid thing. And now they're trying to catch up with the market with their Windows phone. Yeah, it's getting there. Uh, not. So, um, there. yeah, it's, it's just funny. The, the guy is just funny. Just look at him. Yeah. He's a funny guy. Maybe he should go into stand-up. Yeah, maybe when he, when he yeah. leaves Microsoft, if somebody yeah. gives him the sack, maybe that'll, that'll happen. Okay. So, anyway, by the way, uh, Windows 8 sold as many copies as um, our podcast well yeah it's sold as many uh, copies as the uh, OS X uh, Modern Lion okay. in the same amount of time when you think about uh, Windows being 90 odd percent of the market well not now maybe 80 right. odd percent of the market and selling as many copies as OS X that's a bit of a teller isn't it yeah yeah it's not something that people adopt the day it's changed is it with Windows with Apple I mean and, and it was yeah. very low price this year um, uh, Windows 8. I suppose mostly with Windows, people will just uh, buy a new computer instead mm-hmm. of upgrading. Whereas with Apple, people kind of tend to stick with their hardware because it's yeah. so good. Yeah, and yeah, the updates are kind of smaller and more often, perhaps as well. I don't know if that's uh, up until not not that um, different, really. Up until okay. this last one, which is going to start being uh, year over year. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Shall we recommend some stuff? I, I say that would be a good idea, eh, Alex? Recommend something. And now it's time for our recommendations. All right, so we are in the recommendations section now. Uh-huh. And I was going to ask you, Alex, to perhaps start off okay. by giving us a nice recommendation. I will. Um, I'm going to recommend, just because I can, uh, an iPad sort of designed app. So it's all new to me, this iPad thing, because uh, I've Welcome had, along, Alex. I've not had my Three own. years later. So uh, as I said, I got, <laughs> I got it today, so I've not had a lot of time to do anything, but I was putting a few apps that I have on my iPhone that maybe I use quite a bit, uh, and one's just kind of how the design on the iPad makes quite a bit of difference. Um, and uh, the Auto Trader app, actually, which for those Huge, of you yeah. Very different. outside of the UK perhaps don't really know what I'm talking about, but uh, it's really good on uh, the iPad, um, and it really utilizes the screen really well. So it is a kind of the place to sell your car, 
if you're here in the UK. Um, so lots of different cars will go on there throughout the country and you can kind of search, browse and whatever. Um, and on the iPhone, it's okay, but uh, the iPad, it, it's it's quite amazing. And uh, it basically allows you to to browse images, videos, um, uh, the website, all within the app. So that's a nice little feature that you can also kind of use. Did you just buy a car? Oh, you can buy a car as well. No, no, didn't, didn't you just buy one? When? Um, beginning of the year, yeah. Yeah. You're looking for another one already? Right? Uh, I keep up with the, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Could possibly you need to know what to save up for next, don't you? Um, but no, I do like it. Doesn't matter, you know. If I use it, it's if if, if you will use it right. as the okay. listener. So it's just a good app to use. It right? is a good app. Have you tried um, the eBay app? No, that no, is yeah. a classic on the app. Mm. That, that is a yeah, great app. Yeah. So this um, has got loads of um, kind of pop out, um, pop out menus. of yeah, yeah, well, menus and information that's uh, kind of tidied away uh, the pictures are scrollable everything's kind of you can do without leaving the page almost um, which is really good uh, and the kind of sort options as well uh, are a lot easier to get so you can sort by price and then scroll up and down and just just loads of stuff that makes the, the kind of experience a lot easier so um, a little recommendation there it is really kind of the only app for auto trader so you've most likely found it but if not for, for all the uh, iPad get, users um, in, in the world here, we, we apologize for Alex's um, recent, um, you know, love for the iPads, you know, but he seems to be, uh, seems to be enjoying this, uh, this yeah. first reaction. It's nice. Sure. It's nice. Nice to sure. see Alex. Awesome. No, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd, I'd do that. No, it's I great. Had, it's a great letter. I had to. And, and it, it does make a big difference, doesn't it? For a developer, what he can do with, with an iPad sort of screen compared to an iPhone. It's a big difference. It is a big difference. Yeah, and mentioned in our chat room as well is the Flipboard app, which I do have. You have been using it. Um, and we recommended it ages ago. So maybe, you know, we'll talk about it again some other time. But uh, it, it was updated for that size screen, actually. Hmm? It was updated to, to fit um, yeah. that sort of size screen. Yeah. yeah so cool. that's a kind of a social, me uh, social media, social networking, all in one, you know, and just the interface to use is great. It is, is a hmm. great interface, yes. Right. Uh, okay. Well, my recommendation for today is a game. Um, I've been uh, kind of a fan of these uh, series, uh, and I had to recommend it because it's just um, it's just a great, great game. A Need for Speed Most Wanted is now out for both the iPad and the iPhone. Uh, it's not the cheapest of uh, games, but then again, it's not like one of those games where you have to constantly buy coins or mojo or something crazy like that. They do give you option to kind of go through the game a bit faster, but you don't have to. Um, the main thing about... What we're talking about here, more expensive as in like 15 pounds. It's five quid. That's not too bad. That's not not for the games. kind of game that you're getting. Uh, it's it's great. I mean... To pay 10 times you, you would, on your PlayStation. You would find it hard to to get any game with uh, with better graphics than this. Um, the, the road, the details on the road, just, you know, I think back to when I look at these games and I think, you know, when the PlayStation 2 came out and we just were in awe of the of its graphics capabilities and uh, and look at this now and it's, it's just amazing uh, really really good graphics um, just everything from the reflection in the car windows to the, to the to the surface on the road um, and everything you know the cars are you know they have the the right um, uh, logos every little car is uh, is detailed. It's real cars as well, isn't it? As opposed oh, yeah, we're not to the talking kind about of... uh, the uh, Nishun, uh, you know, something uh, like that. And if like I'm that. right in saying most wanted means it, the police chase you, don't they? And so, yes. So um, it's most wanted, of course, has been on the, uh, on the, um, on the platforms, on other platforms for a long, long time, but, uh, but it's, it's arrived in the iPad now. So, Need the speed. You've, well, I remember playing, I don't know if it's Need for, need for Speed on that particular uh, computer, but I remember having 8 That's megs of, uh, of RAM. Wow. Man, when you look back at these games, the, the, your memory is, is, this, is of this beautiful game, but when you actually, oh, this is ugly as yeah. anything. Man, this had some good really music on really one of the tracks. I remember one of them had a really good guitar riff that I quite liked. <laughs> yeah. If you, uh, if we upgraded you want, to Need for Speed free, but it didn't run very well on our computer. <laughs> I think we needed like 64 RAMs and like that. Wow. 64 megabytes. Wow. If, if you haven't 
you know, mm, when you put and, it that Andy way. is saying in the chat room that Crazy Taxi uh, is pretty good. Yeah, Crazy Taxi is a big out for the deal. iPad. It's out for the iPad and the I iPad. I had that on my PlayStation as well, a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, Crazy Taxi was famous, I think, especially uh, on arcade machines. Um, right. I, I just got annoyed with the thing because I could never go past the second city. And, uh, right. of course, at the time you had to put coins in the machine. Right. So I wouldn't really play it for a very long time. Uh, you can get it for £2.99. So there yeah. you go. Uh, the next recommendation. Um, I, I just, I'm not going to buy it because I know I'm going to lose every time and then waste a lot of time. I like the music, though, Offspring. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay, moving on. To, um, to nothing. the end of the podcast. <laughs> Let me mention again, Alex, um, talkingapple.co.uk slash help us. Uh, head over it. there. If you can't help us with your donations and if you don't want a 50 pound, uh, I said 50 earlier and I said 25. If we get to our goal, we turn to 25 into 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you can't help us uh, and, and you can't be bothered about winning some money in iTunes, then uh, just get a free book and you'll be helping us anyhow. How's cool. that? So, thank you very much. Uh, TalkingApple.co.uk slash live also. That would be one way to watch the podcast live and interact with us. Yeah, it's too late this week, room. but uh, next week, do it. Yeah, it'd Please. be good. So, um, I'll just yeah. wait for you to put it. Thanks for listening, uh, and we'll see you again this time next week. Why not? Bye-bye. 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 Oh, press the save button. Oh, yeah. um, okay, I, don't, I don't know. The beginning of the podcast was a bit funky. In we were what? a bit all over the place. How do you mean? I wasn't speaking good English either. Oh, in that sense. Do you mean? Yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't like it. Um, it got better towards the end, but it was my fault, really. I, I just, I don't know. I waffled too much. Right. And when I waffle, I, I make things up that don't uh, necessarily because exist in the English language. It's because that story. For being there again. In the beginning of the, of the podcast, I don't know. People don't like us. <laughs> In the beginning, the beginning of the there. podcast, there was loads. Yeah. I think um, they maybe get kicked out because some of them were coming back and then eventually they were kicked out again. I don't know what's the problem with the, um, with the podcast, uh, with the plugin. Uh, thanks, mm-hmm. Andy, for, for, for being there, mate. And um, we shall see you uh, at some point in the future. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'll be, you're going to cinema, aren't you? To watch? Uh, yeah, at eight o'clock, actually. You waffle nowhere near as much as Leela Pod. Uh, yes, but you know, Leo can speak quite well, whereas I waffle in crazy English yeah. um, of a Portuguese man. Just got a comment on our... Did you? Oh, that's this week, actually. Right. Talking Apple on YouTube. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't actually know what point that was written down. <laughs> Is that up for video or something? That's on YouTube. No, that's this week's 147. Oh, so really? Somebody just YouTube. commented, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they just found, you know, a video and noticed that we were talking about. I don't think you'd stumble across us, would you? Well, I don't know. People go through. You see, look, as soon as we finish the podcast, the video now is in great quality. Oh, it's changed again. <laughs> <laughs> the heck's wrong with, with I, Google? I don't know. <laughs> it's Google. really good quality now again. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Oh. All right, uh, you got kicked out a few times. I don't know. I don't know what's the wrong. Look, look at me. I'm good. Hey, not quite HD, but you know, it's good, good, good audio, good, good light. All right, what can I do? All right, so uh, we'll see you next week. Um, thanks, Andy. Um, I'll say goodbye and end the broadcast.